Hi, this is Jack from Smoky Mountain Scientific, and I want to show you some uh, features of uh, the software we've been working on. This is our uh, WeStat elect uh, electrochemistry software, the 6.0e six, six that I'm uh, going to show you. Uh, just collecting some quick data here. We're going to uh, run a, a cyclic voltammogram and our our compound, our sample includes some uh, hexacyanoferrate. So, yeah, we got some kind of ugly ducks coming, but, uh, you know, it's just because my electrodes are kind of junk at this point, but, you know, these things happen. So if you have nice electrodes, you'll get better voltammograms. Okay, so there's uh, there's one voltammogram. Let's, uh, let's run it again to get a second one on there. Um, voltage limits are once again set in these two boxes. Uh, current sensitivity I've got set to 16. Uh, everything just kind of normal for uh, for this sort of experiment. So when this finishes, we'll acquire a couple of uh, differential pulse voltammograms and we will work them up uh, using our using our software that I'm working on some some uh, preliminary software that I have all right so here comes a differential pulse experiment some data from that and we'll run that again just so we have two of each Now once I uh, once this data acquires, I want to show you that uh, we have a zoom feature that we've been working on. So if you have a a specific part of your voltammogram that you're interested in looking at, uh, you can grab this little box up here in the corner and drag that over, and you can drag the other corner up, and uh, and when you hit this zoom. It, it zooms in on that uh, that part of the data. Okay, so you can go back to restore and that gets you to where you were. Okay, once you hit the zoom function, then you're kind of stuck with what you got. You can go back and change it, but you see the box has disappeared, so that's just life. Okay, so restoring that. What we want to do now is to select our two our two uh, anodic stripping voltammograms and let's save those. So we're going to call that, uh, they're not ASVs, they're differential pulse voltammetry experiments. Let's call it data one. We're going to save that in a place where we know where it is. We're then going to deselect those two and select our two cyclic voltammograms and we're going to save them. Let's call those cyclic voltammetry data one. Okay, we're going to hit the save button. Okay, so those have been allegedly saved and I'm going to bring over our analysis tool. This is a separate uh, user interface. We're going to load the data and you can only load, well currently only load data that is uh, of the same data length. You lose the data that's not there. So we've just opened our two uh, cyclic voltammograms. Uh, once again we have the the box here that we can change the size of and and uh, select some area to either zoom or not zoom. Let's hit the zoom show that we do zoom. We can restore. All right. So it says over here there is nothing being no, none of the uh, neither of the of voltammograms are selected. So now I've just clicked on this file 01 and it says display. It says file 01 is selected. Okay. So that's the first thing we need to do is select one of these two voltammograms. So there's file one. Okay. So we're going to figure out what the peak current is here. And we're going to need to have two points defined. So we're going to pick a point that's on the baseline on the uh, positive scan. 
going to pick the point with the orange box that is our peak position. Okay, so now we hit select the points and then we hit peak calculate. All right, so that gives us this line here, this black line that is our baseline and it gives us this orange line which is our current amplitude. Okay, so you can see that the baseline isn't exactly where we want to have it. So we have this slider over here that allows us to change the slope. You'll notice that the, the baseline position stays on the point that we have selected. Okay, so if we go to, let's call it there, let's say that that's where we want, what we want our, uh, our baseline to be. Now we have this as our current peak and it says over here 32.9 microamps for the uh, the forward uh, cathodic cathodic anodic I believe that's an anodic slide uh, uh, peak um, okay so we have one is about 33 millivolts we can get the other one now we're just going to pick a peak down here for our uh, peak a point down there for our peak we're going to move this up to here for determining our baseline position. Okay, so we're going to just now reselect points, hit the calculation again, and you can see that our our baseline is messed up. So we need to adjust this so that it it goes through the baseline data here. All right, so now we have a reverse current peak of 30 microamps. Okay, so these are fairly similar as you'd expect for a uh, uh, cyclic voltammogramic voltammetry experiment. Alright, so that's for our cyclic voltammet voltammet voltammograms and let's uh, let's close that. We will restart the experiment and we will load now the differential pulse data. Open that up and once again we have two things. If we hit the peak calculations you'll see without without selecting any points you'll see a little error message here it says we need to select points if we select the points without without having the voltammogram selected you notice it says no uh, none selected for which voltammogram we're dealing with okay so let's pick uh, voltammogram 3 and we will pick that as our our peak and uh, I guess we move this thing to there, let's call it, select those points, do the calculation, and once again we move the, the slider to give us the baseline that we want, and this looks like 42 microamps. Alright, so that's, the, uh, that's what we're working on currently. You see there, there are a few bugs in the system uh, that I'm working on, and we will get those fixed as we can. So I hope you, uh, I hope you, hope this helps you. And uh, if you have recommendations uh, as to what, uh, what things you'd like to see addressed, I'd be happy to hear about them. Okay, thanks for watching.